Philosophically, many things are better said than done. When it comes to, uh, you know, a career choice, you need to be realistic and practical. Your profession is a long term goal. You cannot be seen to be experimenting with your career, job or profession. And you cannot take all decisions with regard to the choice of your career based on how it will reflect on your personal life. They are two different things. As Hillary Clinton once said, do not confuse having a career with having a life. So let us proceed with the processes and methodologies involved in identifying and choosing the, the right career path or the right profession. According to me, there are only three steps involved in discovering, finding and deciding what career, work or profession is best suited for you. Well, the first step is self-assessment or self-evaluation. It is a logical technique. Write down on a blank sheet what subjects you really like in high school, which subjects did you excel in high school, uh, which areas of work generate interest in you, are you interested in higher studies or are you interested in some vocational or other training uh, programs or projects? Do you see yourself uh, as a self-employed person, professional or an entrepreneur? What are your natural instincts, strengths and skills? What atmosphere gives you comfort in performance? What are your long-term or short-term goals? You have to answer all these questions. If you do not have answers for some of these questions, you need to engage in a conversation with your teacher or a tutor or a mentor or a friend or a relative or a counselor. There are many online quizzes and SWOT tests to identify the elements of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. That's what SWOT stands for. That may exist around your personality, aspirations and ideas. That will help you in clearing your vision and mission regarding the probable choices of your career. The second step, consider your personal circumstances, including personal limitations, financial and family situations. Make an assessment that, that do these factors facilitate or impair, meaning cause a hindrance or impediment in supporting what you really want to, to take up as a career. If it facilitates and supports your career move, then all is good to go. And if they don't, then draw a balance. Do not lose heart as every disability has an underlying solution, which could well be a middle path. You may be able to have a win-win situation in those circumstances. As Najwa Zebian, a, a Lebanese Canadian activist, author, poet, educator and the speaker pointed out in one of her writings, she said, whatever you do, do it with purpose. Being focused is not something to be ashamed of. It is something to be proud of. When you, when you know who you are, what you are doing and, and have a clear vision of where you are going, you will not need to chase opportunities. Yes, opportunities will seek you. Happiness will chase you and instead of being a choice you will be one choosing you will become a chooser third and final step which i consider really fundamental is undertaking minimum minimum three internships apprenticeship or volunteership whatever you may call with three diverse organizations which are in the scope or range of the areas of your interest, career or jobs you have identified under step one, which I narrated. This is important as it will give you a practical insight into what work you are intending to embrace eventually. This will provide you with a face to face with pluses, 
minuses, advantages, salient features surrounding a specific job or career. This will minimize and hedge the risk of erroneous choice or experimentation or having to prematurely chicken out from a career. Remember, you cannot cross the ocean while just sitting on the banks or on the shores. You have to test the waters.